Man, I'm tired of the cold, and it's not even cold here. <laughs> I think we're going to get snow next week. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, uh, I guess I'm just getting older, and I don't like the cold. If 47 is considered older, then I'm older. I just sometimes still think I'm 20 years old, and I realize that I'm not. Um, anyway, uh, just getting ready to sit down in front of the radio. I really, really like this radio. God, I just wish it had a scope on it, man. I mean, like a live scope. And even like the ICOM. It's really kind of a, a good radio. I mean, the, uh, the receive audio on it is actually really good. I don't know. Um, turn on that. Go up here. I like these MFJ antenna switches because you can put them in the middle here and ground them out. And that way, if something happens, maybe it'll protect you. Uh, you know? So, yeah. I think this thing has just a really good receiver. Oh, I was uh, listening to Clipperton on FT8 over here last night. Um, let's see if we could scan the band. So this does have a scope. You know, you'd push, like, auto, I guess, or, well, yeah, okay, so it would do like that, and if there was something, like, really obvious, you'd be able to see it and go, oh, okay, um, let's see if we go up here, now, we don't really see anything obvious, do we? Now, you know what? Also, um, I have this habit that I do this so that I don't damage radios. I always disconnect the coax cables. Always. So the coax isn't even hooked up. <laughs> I just have to find the other end of it. I'm going to just go back here now that we have the antenna hooked up. Uh, I don't see anything real obvious. It sounds like they're they're still on here though. Yep. So if you want to try 160 meters to get Clipperton, well, that sounds really odd. That's strange. What is this thing doing? Huh. I think I it's automatically scanning. So these guys that hang out on 1980, we might be able to pick pick them up. If they're on here. Come on. <laughs> See. I must have it on fast. It's kind of hard to tame it when it's on fast. So I think I hear them tuning up. Um, I don't believe I can work 180 or 160 on this particular radio without a special tuner. Yeah, it immediately says, uh-uh. Um, I probably could tune this to work. Um, right now it's doing a scan every 60 seconds. So that's where you hear that little blip. So you'll hear it here probably shortly. It'll scan for a quick second and you'll hear the audio interrupted and you'll see this change. I figured it was better than nothing, but if you set it for like every five seconds, it's really annoying because, see, I think it actually just did it right there. Or, how did the, what in the hell just happened? The BFO moved. Okay. Uh, anyway, let me go up here.
There's somebody on here. So, I mean, this scope is, you know, it's, it's, it's not great. I don't have the card in here. The card doesn't really do anything. It gives you a waterfall, I think, maybe, along with the spectrum part. But it's not a live, like, real-time scope. So, basically, I think uh, you need the 3,000, and then you're going to need the extra cards in the 3,000, too. Uh, which, to me, is kind of cheesy, because I don't even know if you can even buy them anymore. You know, uh, considering you got a radio like this back in the day, and this radio had everything on it. Um, but no waterfall. You couldn't get a waterfall. I think you had to get the... Uh, um, the hell? Oh, God, here. It's because I've rolled back the hat. Um, I think the 7600 had the waterfall. Maybe the Pro 3 could show like a little uh, um, FFT uh, deal. So I really like this radio. I just wish it had like a 7300 type of display. I also noticed the display is a little dim. Um, it seems like it's getting worse and worse, of course. So it's probably getting ready to crap on me. Could be the cold weather. Um, it starts to get brighter. I also have it uh, turned down. Um, I don't know if that preserves the life of the CFL tube in it, but um, if it does go bad, I don't know if somebody still sells the backlight kit for it. Um, so we'd probably be in trouble if it went out and that's not available anymore. But that does have a little fluorescent tube. I think it's like you know, in the shape of an L, and there's like aluminum foil around it. So I think if you were creative, you could probably take LED strips. You probably could fit them in there. But it would be really kind of difficult. So, but it is a great radio. Uh, anyway, um, it's, it's one of my favorites. It really is. So, I mean, that would be such a good radio if it had... The uh, screen of the 7300 plus the screen's bigger on this. So, um, and this thing here, you know, um, what I prefer, ouch, damn, watch this pulling the hair on my arms. Um, what I prefer here is just no scope. And I'll leave that there. And normally, I actually don't use the meter. Uh, I'll go into the uh, menu. Um, because with the meter, you only have the choice of uh, whatever it is. You s hit select. We can do compression. Wait. Uh, select. ID. Sorry, uh, this current. So you'd see 20 amps. Voltage. Power, ALC, SWR. Um, now, I thought that if you held down the menu on a particular item, uh, let's see, I long pressed select and it took me to the meter. So we have it on analog. And we'll click select again. And we go to bar. And the reason I like the bar is because it has an S meter for power and SWR all at the same time. So that to me is great. That's one thing I really like about the 7300 was it showed all that stuff and you could actually see the temperature, all sorts of stuff. Uh, they just don't do that for these. Oh, it didn't save it. Okay. So I guess it, the trick with this is you have to select it twice and then hit menu so now if we go down here and we hit SWR so it'll give us either power and compression power and ID power and voltage uh, or just power um, ALC so you can see the power and the ALC or SWR so I just want to see these two things 
And I want to see I want to see them both at the same time. So that's why I leave it on that. I, I like the look of the the needle meter better, but this gives me more information. So, and then I don't have to look at the annoying waterfall. I just leave these on here. So that's how I like to run this radio. But um, this is such a good radio for receiving things like that. You have all the keypad and everything. It's it's really really a sleeper of a radio, I think. Um, and the audio is really really good. And you can go into the menu and you can enable it to transmit wider than three kilohertz if you're into that kind of thing. But you definitely don't have to worry about sounding narrow because you can go at least three, where certain radios are just narrow. So this has good audio on it. It doesn't sound narrow. Um, I I haven't really, really sat down and compared uh, um, all these different things, but I think it probably sounds a little bit better than the 710, but I'll have to sit down and, 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 and do that. And it really... Unless you get on a radio and people are just like, Oh my God, you sound terrible. We're not listening to ourselves. So, like, for me, what I really care about is... Do I like listening to the other people on my radio? You know? And I find that this is really pretty good. Um, I do not like the DNR on it. I did play around with some CW, and I found that, like, it's great for that. But for, like, sideband... I, I really find that you know it's uh, it's not great. Let me see if I can find a QSO real quick. I'll put the fast button back on. Let's go ahead and turn it off. I wonder if these guys are up here. I got it on two. You can go up to 15. So, yeah, you can't really run it. You can. It helps, but you're going to get that underwater artifacts. But this thing is really sounds great, and I don't even have any but this speaker. Oh, I hate to hear that. That was a fan. That was a great guy. 